welcome to the stream. My name is George and uh, you can find me in uh, various different Amiga forums as a uh, Volcano. I would like to uh, thank you all for being here and uh, joining me into this stream uh, which like every Friday we, uh, we are talking about Amiga OS and uh, we see how we can uh, use uh, different applications for everyday uh, usage and help us to uh, stuff and have fun with our computer and uh, today we are going to have a look in uh, some applications and ways to run uh, useful uh, applications that mainly come from the open source community and uh, mainly from Unix and also uh, they are written in a way that uh, they are possible to be ported easily to different uh, environments that's why uh, what we are going to see today is something that uh, happens uh, a lot with applications that run on uh, Linux, uh, Mac OS and uh, Windows. Welcome BBC603, welcome to the stream, glad you are here. Um, we are going to see uh, today two uh, different environments, uh, one of them is called Qt and uh, the second one is called AmiCyclics. Uh, with those two environments we can uh, run uh, applications uh, from Unix and we can compile some applications uh, from Unix to run natively on uh, the Amiga OS 4. And uh, without uh, further ado, let's start and see what we can um, have available on Amiga OS 4. Let me stop the music. And uh, first of all, uh, as I said, we are going to have a look on Qt. Think about Qt like something like um, uh, Magic User Interface. Okay, you can develop applications that have a GUI environment that is based on Magic User Interface, and it's easier to port them, for example, to, to Morphos or Amigo 3 and uh, because the environment, the, the GUI environment is uh, uh, common. That's in, in a way, that's the way that uh, Qt is working. It has the uh, graphics user interface and that's why it is easier uh, for applications to be ported uh, from Unix to um, Windows uh, and Mac OS and Amiga OS 4. Uh, currently we have the version uh, 4.7 which can be found on uh, OS 4 Depot. This was ported by Alkil Wendermark and uh, this is a, a packet that you can download and um, there are also if you if you make a search like Qt um, let me increase the number of results. There are a lot of applications already um, ported to work with a uh, Qt. Uh, have in mind though that uh, most of them were done back in 2013, uh, so are already pretty old. Um, some of them were working pretty good back then, but now they are having some uh, issues and we are going to see um, uh, how uh, a few of them that are quite useful and also I wanted to to mention that um, the Qt 4.7 is quite old uh, but Alkil is already working on porting the uh, latest version um, 6 of Qt and um, yeah, he's, uh, uh, it, it is something that is a uh, work on in progress and we can see an application based on that uh, later. Um, first of all, let's see in, inside Qt uh, folder, installation folder, there are uh, a few um, demos like this one. At, uh, when you start uh, an application in Qt, um, it is a little bit slow to start, but th after that is uh, working pretty fine. You can see this uh, uh, editor 
it has uh, menus, uh, native menus from uh, Amiga OS. It has the uh, window design from Amiga OS. You can um, res um, resize it like you do on any application on Amiga OS 4. Uh, you have the uh, pop-up uh, gadgets like that and you can uh, have for example from the menu if I do uh, about we can see about this uh, little uh, text editor some information and about cute, cute uh, the this uh, window is like the about uh, window from uh, magic user interface so it shows the version of cute and some information about the license um, as you can see, if uh, I click open, it uh, opens a requester, a file requester of Amiga OS, and you can uh, go and open a, a file here, a text file, for example, or something else. Um, and uh, this is just a pretty, uh, pretty small application to text edit something and then say like, uh, okay, let's type something here. And then you can say, okay, I want to uh, export it uh, to RAM as a PDF. And that will generate a PDF file, which if you open, you see uh, the result and the changes that you did. Or you can say, okay, I want to save it. Um, save us again in RAM, uh, enter, and that will create an ODT file. ODT files are the files that can be opened with LibreOffice and OpenOffice uh, as a text file. So you can exchange them, those files with other users on Linux or Mac uh, or Mac or Windows. Okay. Uh, this is a simple uh, application that shows the potential of this uh, environment. Uh, for example, this spreadsheet is also one of the demos. That shows that it is possible to create something like that. And um, what else? And uh, other applications, books. And of course you have here the uh, source code if you want to see how this is done and uh, create your own applications. If you, if you plan to create something that you want to use Qt and uh, be able to have it in different uh, operating systems, uh, running in different operating systems, then you can have it on uh, Amiga OS 4 as well. But again, uh, the current version of Qt is pretty old, so uh, most people are uh, targeting to go with a newer version, which is Qt 6, and it's currently in work um, on Amiga OS 4. Uh, let me show you some of the applications that uh, were released uh, before. For example, the Easy Paint. As you can imagine, it is a paint program, a, a, a very simple paint program, like that and you have the menus at the top as well with icons with pretty, pretty good looking uh, menus and you can design something here or you can say okay let me write and select a font like that. With this application you are not going to do something very uh, very big but it shows the potential of uh, QT. It's quite fast uh, for the Amiga. Hello SLD Snake, welcome to the stream. It is quite fast and you can um, 
imagine that more complicated applications can be uh, possibly can be ported and can be used. Uh, let me show you some others uh, based on internet. In um, Qt, there are uh, quite a lot of um, browsers available. And uh, I believe that if we manage to have a latest version of Qt um, ported, then we will be able to port newer versions of uh, browsers. Uh, this one is called Internet Surfboard, and uh, this is quite old, from two, uh, 2010. Uh, for example, if you go to uh, midguns.net, okay, those are uh, problems with the certificate because it doesn't understand quite well the certificate. And yeah, uh, um, websites like Amigans or uh, AmigaWorld.net or Aminet are pretty simple uh, websites, not heavy with heavy JavaScript and things like that. So uh, I expect that they are going to work pretty fine. But if you go to, for example, um, RTE.ie, RT which is a news uh, website uh, in Ireland, then you will see that it will take much more time to load and um, the display of the information is not going to be uh, quite good or um, even for some sites they are not going to work at all because again we have the issue of uh, the JavaScript that uh, most uh, application uh, most websites currently are using uh, but the websites that are um, working they are um, working quite well and you can use it to visit those websites and uh, read the news or anything. Uh, one more uh, browser, let me show you, Qt Web. And the speed is pretty good for uh, such applications. Uh, let me uh, As you can see, it renders quite well and it is fast. It supports uh, CSS, right? And JavaScript. But these are um, old versions. Here, for example, this is the configuration uh, window for this application. As you can see, it opens on a new window with the uh, design of uh, Qt. There is uh, a way to set different themes for the um, Qt windows so th that the buttons are, are looking uh, different if you want. Um, in um, preferences, it is installed a, a preference program for Qt, and here you can set some information about where it is the home folder where some uh, files are stored and um, the default font that is going to use, the default locale, the way that it is going to uh, draw the graphics, and also the clipboard if uh, you want to copy something from the Amiga and uh, paste it from the uh, cute side, uh, you can do it. Can you please tell me if uh, the stream is fine and is working we well, because I see some uh, <laughs> red lights here. Please tell me if you can hear me loud and clear. And here uh, there is this um, pop-up that um, where you can uh, select the way that Qt is going to look. Let me change it and see if... Okay. And if I start again the application. As you can see, it looks differently, and the, also the uh, 
configuration uh, window is looking uh, differently with different colors and uh, the design is uh, quite different so uh, and this is also the um, one more editor um, this was released let me see if I can find yeah about QT web 2010 as well thank you PPC uh, 603 and thank you JMA 80 thank you very much for your feedback Welcome to the stream, JMA. Glad you're here. Um, and if we check again the RTE, for example, you will see that the design is going to be pretty much uh, the similar like the previous one. Um, So, uh, what else can I show you based on QT? There is a version of an, um, it's the Vacuum, uh, which is an instant messenger uh, application that uh, works over the protocol of uh, XMPP. This is a, um, XMPP is a protocol that is open source and can be used by different um, servers i think uh, google is working with xmpp and uh, i think that discord also work with xmpp i haven't tried it to um, set it up here yet but i plan to do and see how well it is working um, so this is also available uh, and uh, what else And after that, and one of my uh, beloved uh, application, but unfortunately it is not working right now. Maybe uh, an update is needed and will be able to work again. Um, it is Clip Grub. Clip Grub, uh, I don't know if you know it, it is available for other systems as well. And it is, um, it can be used to download videos from uh, YouTube in high resolution uh, let me see why uh, if we can uh, kill it because it crashed okay remove yes okay uh, and what else yeah let me go to the next ones, utilities. Here I have color picker. Um, a simple application again, where you can find the color and then see the numbers in RGB or uh, HSV and see how it wo uh, what the values are. And also I use it uh, mostly because it has a representation of the color in uh, in um, uh, hex like you can use it on um, the web which is pretty useful for example if you want something like that this color here you can get it and use it on your website uh, it has the ability to pick a color from the screen but unfortunately it works only in this window which makes it not quite useful but if I click here you see that uh, shows which color it is this one uh, yeah a, a small um, simple application to use and let's see in music I have QTagger which is also a quite simple application to to use to change the tags of your uh, mp3 songs that you have on your system so if I open uh, my home music not here let's say here it shows you the files that uh, it found 
and the tags and you can go and uh, change something here uh, if you want of course there is also Muse score for those that uh, are writing uh, music in, uh, in the score and they want something uh, to, to work with that I think it is working with MIDI I'm not sure uh, I'm not into that uh, so I don't know how well it is working but it is there for someone to test it and um, next I have something here yeah Q organizer a little bit more useful application for daily use you can have here your events um, your um, your calendar whatever you need to do if um, meetings a to-do list and use it uh, to write down for example uh, and say that I have that completed by uh, 2% okay and uh, I don't know uh, create timetables booklets as you can see I d I'm not I'm not using it a lot that's why it is uh, empty but um, it has uh, something that is quite useful which is if you go to um, uh, settings you can set an FTP uh, an FTP server that means that if you use the same application on another system for example and you have that uh, FTP server uh, set up there as well uh, in the application then uh, that uh, there is going to be a file inside the FTP server uh, which is going to be synchronized by the application automatically so you can have all the information on uh, multiple uh, computers which is quite useful and I'm going to, uh, to try to test it to see how well it is working uh, you can have notes here, you can set uh, different um, events in different days and yeah it is pretty much like a calendar and uh, to organize yourself and what you need to do okay uh, something else that I would like to show you is in programming there is a, a program called SQLightMan it is actually a, an application that helps you um, uh, manipulate, manage um, files that are uh, based on SQLite and let me show you what exactly I mean by that on, um, for MediaVault for example I uh, implemented uh, a way to save your favorites, uh, favorite uh, radio stations or your favorite podcasts uh, or um, set bookmarks on podcast episodes that you want to listen later and uh, this is done by using an SQL uh, Lite library SQL Lite library uh, and uh, this creates actually a file where you ha uh, I have uh, all the information stored So inside the single file, uh, everything is there and uh, let me show you how it looks like. This is something that um, is used by many applications. Uh, Odyssey, for example, has uh, SQLite uh, files that have information about bookmarks, about uh, history uh, and things like that. But let's see the, the one from um, MediaVault. So in, uh, inside this file we have four, uh, currently four tables and there is favorites for example and if you double click here you can see that there are uh, some records 
and those records represent the data um, that are stored. So uh, as you can see here, I have uh, information about radio station and podcast, and these are my favorite radio stations. So they are there um, uh, stored in this file. And using this program, you can create new columns in a table or delete a column or delete some records or even um, say that I want to search for something, select from uh, favorites, uh, where type equals to um, radio. So it's going to bring you back only the radio stations and things like that. Uh, it is quite useful if you want to um, create your own file for your application and uh, also if someone says that I have that problem and uh, you try to debug what's the problem what the problem is you can get that file uh, and search inside if there is a problem with the actual database uh, that's mostly for uh, development of course and one more application that I would like to show you is uh, Daft this is an editor um, that's that can be used for development as well it has uh, color syntaxing it is quite fast when you scroll let me uh, make it full screen and you can um, continue um, your, you can do your work here you can open the files as uh, tabs at the top and you can have a list of all the files at the side that you are working of the project that you are working and uh, you can use it to develop your code and uh, your application uh, using uh, a, a different editor than the ones that we saw in the previous uh, streams right so if you want to develop with uh, Daft and uh, an application that is based on Qt, you can do it here. It is quite fast and uh, useful. Uh, that's a few of the applications that I wanted to show you, but uh, for, for the last I kept the um, a demo, this is a beta demo yet, uh, you can find it as well on uh, uh, OS4Depot. This is uh, the first text editor that we saw, this demo text editor. Uh, this is uh, the same text editor but in a newer version and um, this is uh, developed with, uh, sorry let me do all these assigns okay yeah this is developed with the latest version of uh, Qt that is currently a work in progress as you can see here I hope this is uh, quite uh, visible this is uh, based on 6.2.0 uh, Qt uh, and that's one of the latest versions that Alkil is uh, he's working on and you can use it to again to to write down something and have uh, the pull down menus working or the uh, the font uh, menu and you can do different changes here uh, to 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 fix to make your um, document to look the way that you want, you can export in PDF and save it as an ODT, of course. Uh, here you can see that the menus are inside the uh, program, but I believe that uh, Alkil he is going to do it the same way that uh, they were on the previous and the older version, which is going to be. Um, more native uh, and looking the way that Amiga OS uh, is looking in these applications as well. So 
that it feels more uh, native applications and not something that is coming from the, the outside world. And um, yeah, it is, as I said, something that is uh, in work in progress. And I believe that if uh, this is going to go well, we will see some uh, very interesting projects because this is going to open a new door for us to newer uh, applications and maybe a newer and a more updated um, web browser. Who knows? And uh, yeah, that's the uh, the mo the most um, useful applications that currently are working for for Qt. And uh, the next one that I would like to show you is to talk to you about is uh, Amisignix, which is also. Um, Think about Amisignix like a different environment inside Amiga OS 4. Uh, Amisignix was, develop uh, was developed by Edgar Swann and um, what it does is like creating an environment that is um, POSIX uh, compatible and gives the, um, the ability to f for applications from the Unix uh, from the Unix world to come and uh, be ported uh, with uh, the less possible uh, changes and work just fine inside Amiga OS 4. So uh, if you uh, I install Amisignix, which of course you can find on uh, OS4 Depot as well to download and it is a quite big uh, package 126 megabytes uh, there you will find um, all the applications that are currently available and we will see some of them uh, today as you can see there are a lot available uh, but if you install Amisignix and you start it for the first time you will see something like it opens its own uh, window like um, a new operating system <laughs> okay you have a desktop actually you have two desktops you can have uh, different applications because it uses virtual desktops like uh, all the Linux environments, uh, all the Linux operating systems are doing. Okay, and Mac OS, of course, and Windows. And um, so you can have Windows in there and applications running, uh, a file manager like that. And you can have a start menu at the bottom with some applications, uh, with some applications, with the installed applications in the menu for you to start if you want to. For example, if you go to uh, EasyTag, it will open inside a window and you can uh, use this application like uh, you were um, running it in uh, a Linux distribution. Uh, of course, the external window, um, you can set the, the, the width and the, the size of this window if you want it to have in a different screen, for example, you can do it, um, uh, or in a, um, in a smaller window or a, big, a bigger window, you can do it. Um, and yeah, the thing is, as you can see here, for example, right now, at the top, I don't know if it is uh, visible, you have two different um, pointers. So it seems like an um, operating system inside the operating system or like you are connected with VNC to, to another uh, to another computer in your network uh, I haven't done that I'm running only <laughs> on Amiga OS 4 so uh, and what you can do is Edgar wanted to give uh, a way to have 
a feeling that the applications that you are running are native on your system without uh, a start bar at the bottom. Uh, so what he did is that you can run an application uh, in a standalone mode and what it does for example if I start in standalone the API world for example here I set the maximum uh, window size which is 1280 to 1024 okay and I can set the window manager. The window manager is the manager that um, draws the windows and the borders of the windows inside the, the application. The dynamic window manager um, is something that um, doesn't have any borders and every window uh, takes its position in the, in the area that uh, it it pushes the other windows and takes a position in the in the uh, the area that can be drawn. For example, if you have two windows, they are going to be placed one uh, by by the side of the other, and they are going to split the screen in half. We will see it here, and let me start it. Abbey World, Abbey World is a word a text editor. Okay. It is version 2.8.6. You can open a lot of uh, file formats from OpenOffice, from uh, Microsoft Word, uh, there are many different formats. For example, let me open um, a Word document. Open like this and if I open a new one uh, another one for example this one which is an RTF you see automatically it splits the, the screen in half almost half and uh, you can have both of the um, windows side by side to get rid of one of them close and it's gone and you can uh, say that I want to save that file as one of all these um, formats. The good thing about Amisignix is that under file system here, you have all the um, all your partitions from the Amiga OS uh, side, as well as uh, the assigns. So uh, you see here I have uh, AMI SSL. AMI SSL is not an actual uh, partition. <laughs> it is an assign that I have on my system. So if you want, you can double click there and go there to save your file. Or if you want, you can go to RAM and save that file as uh, I think it has PDF and say that test 2 save and if you all go to RAM you see the, the file and you can open it as a PDF um, so you can do work inside dummy Signix um, and save and exchange files with the Amiga OS 4 side just fine or load files from the Amiga OS uh, side uh, without any uh, difficulty. Uh, the Abbey Word is, as I said, a, a, a Word document. You can select. Uh, I think that most of you have used uh, Word documents before. You can uh, change the way that the document is looking. Okay and you can uh, select and change the, the the font that you are using or if you have different styles you can use something like a different style and also uh, insert tables and whatever you want spell checking of course it has spell checking and you can uh, use it to to figure out to to fix the the errors uh, right menu uh, right mouse clicking 
you have the menu like it is working in um, any other system okay and of course you can have you can set select this uh, text and set the background color or the text color like that just like any other um, editor word uh, document editor okay and if you close it close without saving and closes the uh, signix as well so what it does it is if you open different applications inside uh, AMI, uh, AMI Signix, uh, it uh, starts an X11 uh, server and starts this application and the whole environment. As you have seen, it is the speed is pretty good uh, for daily work. Let's see something else. Um, a, a mail uh, client, which is called Close. It is available and you can have here all your emails and click on something and see underneath the the content of the email and of course send emails and receive emails also it has if I'm not wrong a calendar this one yeah if you go here you can have a calendar that is exchanged with your server. I don't know if any one of you uh, have ever used um, this kind of applications, uh, or you you like to use something different uh, on uh, Amiga OS 4. Mainly for me, um, on uh, Amiga OS 4, I'm using YAM because it's quite fast and I have a lot of emails there. Um, and also I use uh, Silfeed, which is another uh, mail client for uh, Cygnix, which has the ability to connect with uh, IMAP. For example, uh, I am connected to my Gmail account and uh, using IMAP, so I can see uh, the emails from there and um, For example, this one, I can read the emails, I can uh, click the URL for this, this one, for example. And what it does here is uh, inside Amisignix, Ami there is um, also uh, a version, an older version of uh, NetSurf, uh, version 2.8, if I'm not wrong. Let me see here. Yeah. NetSurf 2.8. Uh, in uh, Amiga OS 4 we have of course NetSurf 3.10 which is the latest but in Cygnix you have the, an older version and as you have seen when I double click on the a URL it opens the, edit, the browser and it splits again the screen uh, to fit all of these um, both of these applications and if I click quit, then it gets back to the way it was. And if I want to compose and send an email, I can do it here. The window for the composing, again, it opens half the screen. And uh, you can say that I, I want to send an email. Send a test email. If I start writing something here, and then click send and the email accept and the email is sent through IMAP connected to Gmail so you can uh, have your Gmail uh, in an application on your desktop um, as I said earlier the way that um, Edgar did with the standalone mode like that is that you, you see the application inside its own window and it feels uh, like a, a desktop application. You, you run it from its own icon 
and if you want you can drag this icon and put it in the taskbar in the uh, Amidoc and run it from there if you want to have it all the time available uh, at that uh, area and when you exit it closes the whole window and the X11 um, environment another one let me show you Gnumeric which is a spreadsheet application uh, with a lot of uh, features right and if you uh, go to for example let me see samples here um, you can have uh, seats with values and graphs yeah but this right now is not so uh, doesn't we need a bigger window let's see how we can do it I believe you have seen that whenever I start an application uh, this window uh, comes up is a configuration for this application for the standalone mode and you can set here the the actual uh, window size that you want to have for example let me set it to uh, 1920 to 1000 Video driver is something that uh, is a configuration of how Amisagnix is going to draw things on um, the screen. Uh, it is something that changes based on your graphics card, the drivers that you have installed, and all this stuff. There is uh, inside Amisagnix. There is plenty of uh, documentation on how to find the best display driver for your system. So if you try to use it, you have to read that because uh, depending on your uh, machine and depending on the graphics card that you are using, you might need to uh, use a different video driver. And also depending if you want this to open in a different uh, screen. Okay and not as a window on the workbench hello Liverlord. welcome to the stream thank you for being here and um, yeah so we, s we change the width, uh, width and height uh, you can click on that if you don't want the when you start the application to see this uh, window for me because I'm testing a lot of things I keep it unchecked and save so from now on whenever I start this application it's going to start in bigger window uh, so if I do open again the one that we opened earlier okay we have everything here tabs at the bottom like in any uh, spreadsheet uh, that you might use in any uh, operating system now I don't know how much of the features of the latest Microsoft uh, Excel it supports from my uh, from my uh, needs it covers everything quite well because I don't use uh, spreadsheets a lot and uh, you can uh, save a spreadsheet in a lot of uh, different formats so that you can exchange them with others with, uh, that, have, that are using other operating systems uh, you have the open office uh, of course and uh, I think you have a, a MS Excel as well up to 2007 as I can see here uh, let me see if I can open another uh, file from the demos and here you can see that uh, it splits again the screen so to uh, put both of the windows inside uh, the area that it can uh, use 
close the other one so you have the new uh, window and you can work on that um, we have GIMP um, an older version of GIMP 2.6 it's not the latest one uh, hello Falcon11 welcome to the stream thank you for being here uh, Livello says only complain uh, was for GIMP running pretty slow for me yeah it has to do okay it, it depends on what you try to do on uh, GIMP if you try to open a 4k image and you try to do a lot of uh, heavy filters in there it might be slow uh, also it has to do with uh, the display driver sometimes if you um, choose the wrong display driver or a display driver that is not the best for your system uh, it might work just fine but it might also uh, be slow remember that Amisignix um, loads a whole um, different environment inside Amiga OS 4 so uh, I expect to, that to be slower than if, I, if we had an application like for example um, I don't know image effects on Amiga OS 4 right it is going to be uh, 100 uh, times slower But for example, here we have some uh, filters, motion blur, let me resize it. Okay, let me here make it that okay and it applies the the filter it's something fast and uh, to test it uh, slow driver level says slow driver was probably the issue I did not know about that yeah uh, have a look on that um, document because it has a lot of information there and it it is uh, quite interesting what you are going uh, what you can do with that sometimes if you go to a different screen because the um, Amisignix is working I think in 24 bit of uh, color okay and my uh, workbench screen is 32 bit colors so Amisignix to be able to uh, work well and the colors to be shown uh, quite well here it uh, does some work on conversion okay if you go and uh, open the same things on its own uh, screen it might be much faster I don't do that here because I want you I, I this is not going to work for me on the stream because the capture card is not going to to capture it in uh, the best way that's why I'm opening that in uh, a window and of course you can select an area or you can uh, draw something in here um, which is pretty fast maybe maybe that of course the this speed is because I have um, the hardware that is quite fast for things like that okay it doesn't mean that if you run it on um, a SAM 440 or a, I don't know my old <laughs> micro Amiga is going to be that fast no it's going to be <laughs> quite slow um, and also you can open uh, screens uh, pictures, uh, whatever files you want from uh, your Amiga uh, partitions 
like let's say this one and work with, with that file uh, or even create new files right Falcon 11 says uh, today you saw programs on Ami Cygnix uh, Falcon 11 yeah today uh, I saw programs that uh, that can be used in uh, Amiga OS 4 that use a different environment like Amisignix or a, a different GUI uh, implementation like the ones that we saw earlier that are based on uh, Qt, Qt 4. Mainly it is, it is based on, uh, this stream is based on applications that are coming from the Unix uh, world and can be used uh, in Amiga OS 4 for daily usage and uh, do some work with them. For example, here with uh, GIMP you can do a lot of uh, stuff uh, with uh, images and photographs, right? And uh, use them later to upload them on your uh, websites or whatever. Livello says, yes, it makes sense that requires a lot of processing power. Yep, because uh, currently I mean, Cygnix, as much as I know, it doesn't use um, hardware acceleration from the graphics card. So everything is happening on the CPU uh, and uh, the CPU has to do uh, all the, the, the calculations and uh, do all the, the, the heavy uh, work for this environment. The interesting thing is that Ami Cygnix is so compatible with other uh, with a Linux, for example, that you can if you have a really fast um, network, you can run uh, applications from your machine that is on Linux, and you can run them inside the uh, Amisignix here. Uh, so you can open the latest, uh, for example, Firefox and have it on your uh, Amiga OS 4. Uh, but if you if you have quite fast um, network because what it does actually and that's the the way that x11 is working on the unix uh, on unix you can say that i run the application here but the design of all the the environment and the gui can be done on the screen of the, uh, the uh, another uh, computer in the network uh, but it sends a lot of information for that that's why you need a uh, fast um, network to make it work uh, well and then you can uh, do whatever you will do uh, in the other uh, computer by your Amiga uh, write down the, uh, the a URL and visit that URL and uh, see the, the page uh, in your screen but if you try to save something then uh, you see the uh, hard disks of the computer that actually runs that application. But it's doable, I have, I have tried that and it, it works. Um, Livello says we'll definitely check out the Amisignix docs. Yep, yeah, please do. And yeah, and that's a uh, GIMP for example. Uh, let me close that. Um, what else? Home bank. I don't know if you remember that application. That uh, is a um, finance application that uh, started from Amiga OS 3. There is a version uh, available on Amiga OS 3, it uses magic user interface, but at some point the uh, developer moved to, to other operating systems uh, with more uh, users, of course, and this is one of the versions that uh, was released on uh, Linux, uh, version 4.6.3. It still has here import from Amiga, which is very nice. Uh, to have, 
and you can do uh, your finance here actually you can uh, log your finance here and you can uh, have uh, analysis on your expenses on your income and see uh, different uh, information that will help you to manage your uh, your uh, money uh, this is demo it's not my <laughs> my uh, income so I wish <laughs> it was uh, and that's a uh, home bank which is also available uh, we saw NetSurf 2.8 Pitkin I don't know if you know Pitkin it is uh, an instant messenger which can be connected to different um, networks here you will see that I choose window manager to be open box and I will show you exactly why um, Pitkin has a lot of different um, windows and it helps if you have the, the, the window in its own size because otherwise think about having this window in full uh, full size here it's going to be awful and uh, for example right now we are connected in uh, discord uh, in different channels in discord servers and uh, you can see for example here apollo team Ami amikit and others that i am registered in uh, discord so it works quite well with discord and other networks and if you double click here it shows you the latest discussions and you can communicate with the people who are in this uh, discord channel which is also quite useful and nice to have right uh, interesting things numeric we've seen that Silfit, we have seen that so the body so the body is also an application that helps you with graphics but it um, it is mostly for um, vector graphics I was trying to find the, the word, the right word so for example let me show you if you have this one which is an SVG file and you can uh, you can select an item you can resize it you can rotate it of course you can design your own items or you can go here and say ok uh, fill settings and you can change the way that it is looking the color the uh, transparency and whatever you want to do with your uh, vector graphics design your own vector graphics or uh, do something uh, like a change like I'm doing here and then you can say that okay I want to save it the file save us um, in let's say RAM plain SVG for example okay save and we have here the SVG let me put the uh, extension but SVG as you know it is as you might know it is a text uh, file which can be uh, seen only from applications that support SVG uh, I'm not sure th if we have any uh, in Amiga OS 4 as an SVG viewer but I I'm uh, pretty sure that um, Odyssey is able to open this file let me try it here yeah and you can see the, the image 
OTC supports SVGs, so because they are uh, also they also can be used on uh, uh, websites. The benefit of SVGs is that instead of JPEG and uh, any other uh, image, is because they are numbers, they are vectors. Uh, you can resize them in any um, size that you want and they are not going you are not going to see them uh, blurring or uh, broken because of uh, pixels and this is quite useful if you are making uh, logos or things like that and uh, yeah so if you want to have uh, to, to create your own vector uh, graphics in uh, MegaOS 4, you can do that through Amisignix using the Sodipodi, which is also, as I said, an application that comes from uh, the Unix environment. So you can, the work that you are doing here, you can transfer it to your uh, Linux computer or your uh, Mac computer and com continue that there. Um, Let me close that, do it. And yeah, that's that's the last. Um, have have you seen? Yeah, have you seen all that? Uh, that's the last uh, application that I wanted to show you on uh, Amisignix. Um, just have in mind that. The Amisignix environment and uh, the Qt uh, GUI are um, two different solutions to have uh, applications from uh, Unix uh, world that is difficult to be implemented uh, natively for our systems. I mean, uh, it is difficult for someone to create or a lot time consuming for someone to create an application like um, GIMP or like uh, Abiword or like uh, Sodipodi, right? We have some old applications, but um, they are not quite there. And uh, it is a good way to have those applications running on our system with an acceptable uh, speed. And they are quite useful for everyday use. So these applications are able to solve a little bit our uh, hands on uh, doing daily stuff and um, so to keep us a little bit more away from our Linux computers, our Mac OS computers or Windows computers. It's better to use co Windows computers just for gaming <laughs> maybe. And, uh, yeah, uh, and that's the solution that I wanted to, to share with you today. I don't know if you find that useful or uh, if you ever had the chance um, to use uh, those file, uh, those applications. Um, especially for Amisignix, it needs some extra uh, time to, to read the configuration and take some time to, to make it uh, work the best way that it can. Um, Edgar has done a lot of work there. Uh, Liverpool says Windows not different for gaming. It it runs a pretty good uh, Amiga Live there, right? So it's good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to, to show you today. Um, I hope you find it uh, useful. And uh, I would like to, to thank you all for being here today and um, watching my stream. And also, I would like uh, to thank uh, all my uh, supporters. I have the coffee page at uh, coffee slash Volcero where you can uh, support me as well if you would like. Uh, I want to, to mention that uh, with your support, I continue to do the, the work that I'm doing on uh, open source applications for Amiga OS, Amiga OS 3, uh, Morphos and uh, Amiga OS 4. And also I am creating this content uh, and these uh, streams um, every, every, almost every week. Um, 
and I hope that I'm showing some interesting stuff for you. Also, uh, I want to mention uh, that 50% of the donations every uh, month, at the end of the every month, are going to uh, donate it to other Amiga uh, projects and uh, websites to support uh, developers uh, that uh, create uh, awesome applications for us uh, to use and uh, help us uh, keep our uh, computers uh, useful. And especially I would like to, to thank Daniel uh, Zedlika, T. Liverlord and uh, Roman Karkin, my Amiga pals who uh, support me uh, every month. Uh, thank you everyone for being here today and uh, watching my stream. I will see you again uh, next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.